Um, I'm Richard Turner. I work at the uh, Delta Research and Extension Center in Stoneville, and I'm finishing up my PhD right now. I'm going to try to graduate in May. Um, and this is Dr. Ben Lawrence over here. He's going to be taking up after I am. And uh, he's the new soybean agronomist uh, in Stoneville. And he can introduce himself when he gets up here if he wants to tell you a little bit something else. <laughs> Um, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about soybean populations and row orientations. Uh, a little background on some soybean. We were down this year in Mississippi. Actually, we were down about 13% because of all the flooding. Uh, you can see the picture here. That picture was taken on April 26th. That was off Highway 61 down around Cary, Mississippi. Um, so that was a big issue that we had in our region this year and throughout the uh, Midwest too. Um, but big reason why I've Acres were down, like I said, because of flooding, adverse conditions, everything was wet, rainfall, no tillage got done. We had, we had a lot of problems this year. Um, but for our producers, the biggest issue that we have is going to be our soybean cost. That's our biggest expense that most of our producers face. And so we're not necessarily going to be trying to make our producers more money but by making more yield. We're going to see if we can find a way to save them some money by maybe reducing some inputs. Um, so just to kind of break my project down a little bit, we were using the uh, Curtins 4748 Liberty Link. Uh, we were on a Commerce Silk Lawn. It's a pretty popular soybean texture soil that we have in the Mississippi Delta. Um, in 2018, we had two row orientations. That's going to be single row and twin row. All this will be on 40 inch bed centers. Um, in 2017, you can see we had three populations. We had eight, 10, and 12 seats per foot. Uh, we saw no differences in 2017, so we decided to go a little bit lower. Um, so here you can see for 18 and 19, we still have the two orientations, but we added an additional population. And that comes out to be 6, 8, 10, and 12 seats per foot now. Uh, so a little picture of our single row, twin row equipment. The monosome down on the bottom is our twin row equipment. John Deere up top is our single row. Um, and then breaking those uh, 6, 10, 8, or I'm sorry, 6, 8, 10, and 12 seeds out, it's going to be described as low, medium, high, and extra high. And there's the seeds per acre, as you can see. So the low, that's as low as 78,400 seeds per acre. That's, that's pretty low. I don't know any producers planting seeds that low. Um, but it's not extremely uncommon to see guys planting that 130 to 156,000. Um, so we wanted to know. You know, can we save these guys some money by cutting that cost down? And you can see down here on the bottom the cost of the seed associated. Um, now, like I said, this is using the Liberty Link system seed. So some seeds might cost a little bit more than others, but this is the seed that we that we were using. This is what it costs. So ranging anywhere from thirty-five dollars, uh, twenty-five cents an acre for the low population to seventy dollars and fifty cents for the for the extra high population. You got any treatment on that, or is that just next seed? Sir? That's just bare seed. That, seed. That's just bare naked seed. Bruiser and all that we had it on it, but that was just the cost of the seed that come from our economists. Um, so is this a hot topic? This is I got this uh, two days ago from Mr. Jeremy Ross right there, Dr. Jeremy Ross. And so soybean seeding rates, stand counts, uh, replant study recommendations. It's a big topic right now. You know, we're having a lot of inclement weather. Weather. We're pushing the envelope. We're trying to plant earlier and earlier and earlier. So we're planting into more inclement weather conditions. So we didn't necessarily try to make this a replant study, but from our data, we can use it as some thresholds that we can use for replant decisions. So this is a picture that we have using our field view. The blank spots, that's our twin row. We don't have the capability to make, use the field view on our uh, twin row planter, but you can see the variation. So everything uh, north of that line right there, that's going to be our early planted. Everything south is going to be our late planted. Um, I, I'm not really going to get into the late planted. I do have one more field view map that I'm going to show you that has it relative in there, but for the purpose of this talk, all the data that I'm going to be showing is going to be based on our early talk. But, I mean, this is what guys are doing now. They're planning variable rate. Um, not saying I agree with variable rate, and I'm about to show you why, 
but that, that's big variation going across the field. Um, so the little first data that we're going to get into is going to be our canopy closure. Um, the yellow, black, orange, and purple lines, that is going to be our population. We didn't have just a huge amount of response to our planting population, but if you will see the little bit more bold lines, the blue and the red, that's our row orientations. The red being our twin row had greater canopy closure at every single growth stage, R1 to R7, throughout the growing season when compared to the single row orientation. Uh, that's just not, I mean, that wasn't just surprising, the dynamics of that population. I would expect that to happen, but we didn't factor in any kind of herbicide applications. Could we get away with less? Could we get away with more? I, I'm not a weed scientist, so we didn't get into that kind of stuff. But just from this, you could speculate that you possibly could canopy quicker using the twin row orientation. So there is possibility that you could cut some cost using the twin row orientation. Uh, so getting into our seed index, this is 100 grams per 100 seed. Uh, single row, twin row on the bottom. Uh, that is statistically different, but in the grand <coughs> scheme of things, that's not just a huge big worry to me. Uh, I don't think that the advantage in the single row is really going to outweigh the twin row. Um, and I'll get in a little bit more detail on that later. Now granted, if you got a couple billion seed, that could add up. I'm not saying that, but um, so that's our, that's our seed weights right there. So seed weight for our population, no difference across the board. Those are statistically similar. Um, very, very little difference. There is a bigger sway. Seed weight is, is impacted more by our row orientation than it is our planting populations. All right, so next we're gonna talk about our plant nodes. This is nodes on the total plant. You can see the solid bars uh, is gonna be on our stem and the crossbars are going to be our branches. The uh, numbers on top of each bar, that's the to uh, total for that column. Add the two up and that's a total for both together. Um, and that's how all of these will be designated throughout the rest of the PowerPoint slide. So there's no difference in node stems uh, or stem nodes uh, across either orientation, but you can see a pretty significant difference right here between our branch nodes. So twin row had more brand, had more nodes than our single row orientation did, and that could be attributed to having more room from plant to plant. I mean, that, that wasn't really surprising there neither. We kind of expected that to happen. All right, so same thing. This is going to be uh, plant nodes, but this is across all our populations. Um, same layout, as I said earlier. Uh, huge, way more nodes on our low population when compared to our extra high. Um, nodes responded really well to our populations, much more so than our orientations did. Um, as you can see in the low, we had just as many nodes on our branches as we had on our, uh, on our main stem. And, and like I said, that's just because you had that much more room then for that plant to grow outwardly, um, to compensate and make up for that, that void, that extra room as associated with the uh, extra high. Um, obviously low had way more significantly more uh, nodes when compared to all the other populations. All right, so now we're gonna get into pods. Um, and this is part of our mapping. We mapped four plants um, randomly off of the either row one or row four. That's our non-harvest rows. And this is where we, how we got all these numbers, all these measurements. Um, so orientation again pods uh, main stem not a whole lot of difference 46 1 to 45 2 not a whole lot of difference there but way more pods on um, branches comparing the twin row to single row all right so getting into our populations kind of similar trend as what we were seeing with our nodes uh, way more pods on our low population as when our extra high population and uh, I can't see it the computer's way over there I had a note written down but uh, so essentially the low population is half of the extra high so but we only had that's about a 30 percent reduction in pods so you have a 30 percent reduction in pods 
by increasing, by doubling the population. Uh, some of the data that I'm not going to show is our stand counts that we got. So we, lost, we lose way more plants throughout the growing season with our extra high than what we lose with our low. Uh, we were only losing about one, one plant per three foot out of our low population, whereas we were losing about four plants per three foot with our extra high population. So, and that's just plant to plant competition. That's competition for sunlight, competition for nutrients throughout the growing season. Um, so maybe we are planting too many seed going with that extra high because we are losing so many. All right, so this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, talking about our field view. Imagine that line right there, this way being the north half of the field, that way being the south half of the field. Uh, early planted, this was planted on April 24th or 26th. Uh, you can see 61.1 bushel for all these 64 plots averaged together. Uh, high plot was a 75.9. Uh, this side was planted about five weeks later. This was first week of June. Gonna be around June the 3rd-ish, if I'm not mistaken. Um, high plot there, I believe, is this 47.2. So huge difference in yield loss just from planting, planting date. Uh, I believe that came out to be about a 42% difference in yield just in planting, uh, planting date. All right, so getting into the yield here, this is yield and bushel per acre across our orientations. Uh, not much, about a 2% yield difference there. 54.3 is compared to the uh, twin row compared to our single row at a, at a 53 even. So a bushel, you're to take a bushel and a half. Um, the technology for the twin row cost, I believe it's $2 more an acre, $2.50 more an acre as compared to the single row planter. And just, that's nature of the beast. You got more working parts, more boxes, more units, twin row equipment costs more. Um, but if you add that to a $9 bushel beans, you know, that, that would pay for the cost of the uh, uh, additional equipment cost. Um, and especially if you're using that type of equipment in corn production already. So this would allow you to cover more acres with that piece of equipment to get that uh, compensate and get that money back faster. All right, so here's grain yield across our um, populations. Like I said, that's no different. You're talking a 1.2 bushel difference from low and extra high, and that's twice as many seeds. And I kind of went on and put the uh, cost per seed population back there just to kind of give you an idea. So, you know, $35 more is not going to compensate and pay for that extra, you know, bushel, you know, 1.2 bushel. It just won't happen. Uh -huh. And that's because of more pods. Um, that we're setting on our lower populations. Um, if you look at, I wish I had a picture of our extra high populations compared to our low population. Much more branchier, girthier stem. I mean, the extra high population is nothing but a twig, essentially. Uh, lodging could be an issue um, with extra high. It has not been an issue while we've had this study going, so I have no lodging data, nothing like that, because it wasn't an issue the whole time that we, this study was going on. All right, so getting to a little bit of recommendations. Now granted, this is a corn field, so it doesn't directly apply, but it does apply. And the reason why is because, so we'd recommend playing the medium population. Why the medium, why not the low? Well, we believe that with the low population that if something were to happen, you lose a couple plants, that then you would start seeing that start papering off. If you were to drop below that you know, 78,000. Yes, sir. What was your final stand count on the lowest? I, we were only losing about one seed per three foot with that with that low population. So you're you're still talking over 70,000. Okay. Um, but but I'm I'm just saying if if we were to have a low, I just didn't want some. That's why I wouldn't want to recommend somebody going and planting 78,000. But that that medium population is a hundred. <laughs> you know that that medium population is a hundred thousand. So if you lose two, you're still at that low parameter. And that's what I'm saying. And, and you've, heard, you've heard all the talks about the bad germination, low germination percent. We did not account for low germination. 
We planted 100,000 seed, we planted 78,000 seed. We did not account for bad germination. Um, and like I said, we would use though this low population for a, for a replant threshold. So if you were to go plant the 104, the 130, but you go out and you do stand counts, if it's uniform, and that's why I showed this picture, obviously that's not uniform. I mean, and that would become a harder replant decision than if you got a thin stand. You know, do you kill the top? Do you drop in and just plant the bottom? You know, that, that's a whole different ball game than, than what we're talking about if you got a uniform stand. Um, that's a different talk for another day, replanting in that kind of situation. Um, by the way, that last picture and this picture were taken off of uh, Highway 438 between Arcola and the, and the uh, Sunflower River. And I'll, I wish that picture was a little bit clearer. You can kind of see it. We'll talk about it. Um, but our twin row orientation, like I said, it increased grain yield and it also allowed for quicker canopy closure. Um, we think that you need to evaluate the initial um, planting date versus the replant planting date. And I'll come back to that and talk about this more and how that right there is going to relate to this picture. And could we, re we could be replanting into a better population, into a better planting date, depending on the initial planning date. Um, and you're never guaranteed a better stand if you do replant. So this picture right here was taken on June the 3rd. I don't know if you can see the little skeletons right here, the little carcasses coming up through there. So this guy literally replanted sometime in late May. He lost two weeks by killing and replanting. And we went out and did stand counts on the carcasses he had about a 65,000 stand count. That's on 40 inch twins. Um, if he would have called me, I'd have told him, absolutely, do not desiccate that field and start over. Because it was fairly uniform. I mean, you can see them, the, the skeletons going up and down the field, the carcasses of the plants that he desiccated. Uh, and then the, you're never guaranteed. I mean, look at that row right there. Hardly anything come up on that row. I mean, no moisture. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different issues when you get into replant decisions. So this late in the growing season, now if this would have been, you know, April 15th, yeah, replant. You know, you know, because you're replanting into a better window than when the original would have been planted at April 5th or something like that. So he'd have been replanting into a, into a better planting date window. But June, June 3rd, ah, that's not a better planting window. I would have kept the initial stand. Uh, all right, that finishes me up. Uh, a few questions at the end. You want to go on and go, or yeah, that's fine. Whatever you all want right. to do. Was so that all on forty inch roots? Every bit of this was on forty inch. Like I said, either singles or twins. When we replant, a live plant's a live plant. I may have way too many, but I don't kill live plants. That's right. Absolutely. I better kill some, but I ain't spraying them. That's yeah, right. I, I agree. I agree, hundred percent. Do not kill them, because then you just lost. I mean, you lost potential. They're too thick. They're too thick, but I ain't killing them. <laughs> All right, so twin row then would not be as economical, I don't believe, if you were to drop to a 30, because inside row and inside row is technically a 30 inch row for the twins, because you have a two inch gap on, I mean, a 10 inch gap on top of the bed. So I think you would see a very similar outcome in population terms. I don't think you would see, I, see, I think you'd still see the no variation across populations on 30s or even if you drill plant. Um, but I, I, the orientation, I think, would be, I mean, I, I don't think that would I mean, work, work out at all. It's, it's going to be hard to plant twin, inch, uh, twin, twin row on, on a much closer, narrower bed that would be associated with a 30. So I, I would say that the twin row, the single row, would only really apply to wide beds. And you're dealing with tractor tire size. We've tried going narrower. The problem you get into is compaction on the side of 30 inch row. Tractor tires aren't designed for beds in our, in our part of the Delta. You go to narrow tractor tires, but you don't damage the bed, then you can't hold it up. You can make it with 30 inch rows though. Do what? You can make it with 30 inch rows. Oh yeah, but our situation is beds. You know, if you've got... I got beds, 30, 16 row 30. 
Dual tires, front and back. What size tires? Uh, got 1834s up front and got a, a narrow, uh, it's a 50, uh, uh, it's 50 inch, but I think it's a- 50 or 52? Probably 1852? No, that's the, that's the, I think it's a 388. I think it's closer to a 380 than it is to a, it's closer to a 380. It's not wide that we put on the bigger tractors, like a 420. But you, you know, we have trouble when it's wet, but other than it being wet, 30 inches, piece of case. But you're not planting twins on a 30 inch. Oh, I never do that. Yeah. <laughs> but I've got twins on 38s. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do that at Verona, yeah. but all this was in the Delta. But even on 38s, we keep the 30 inch spacing. So on 38 inch rows, the rows on top of the bed are 8 inches, eight inches apart. apart. Yeah. yeah. So we keep the 30 to 30. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's where we're at. Keep the 30 inch spacing right. between the beds. They're on 40 because they were on 40s in 1940. <laughs> <laughs> and they're on 38s because they were 1938. They refused to change it. <laughs>